All right, welcome back. First, I would like to open with an apology. I removed the original video based on this because this diode here was reversed. This is the correct direction. I thank the read, uh, viewers for notifying, notifying me of this error. So let me explain again what this is all about. Your v, This is a 52 kilohertz pulse width modulation output. It's a square wave. Duty cycle is based on the feedback of this 50k 1k resistor voltage divider. On the positive output, this diode of course is turned off. Energy is pumped into the coil which creates a expanded magnetic field. When the output goes low, that magnetic field collapses, creating a counter EMF, and through the diode will deliver energy to this capacitor. That's the way this uh, works. You could do it with any pulse width modulation signal, but at this high frequency, it is very efficient. All right, on to the rest of the video is what you've seen before. All right, here's a close-up of the prototype board that I it's built here. This is part of an ongoing uh, series of videos. In this case, it's supplied voltage through a current limiter circuit that's covered in a separate video for an H-bridge test. Here I'm focusing entirely on the construction and operation of this switching voltage regulator which can have an input of up to 40 volts and an output of 1 amp. All right, here is a close-up view of my prototype. It's just built, it's been uh, hand-wired on this prototyping board, heat sink, here's your coil, a couple of capacitors. The parts are really shown here minus the potentiometer and a single resistor. It's a coil, two capacitors, a Schottky diode, and the regulator itself. It is a 5-pin TO220 device. What is the advantage of a switching voltage regulator? Let's look at a linear voltage regulator that has been used in thousands of devices over the years. In this typical example, I'm inputting 24 volts. I need 5 volts and a half an amp out, or 2.5 watts of power. Instead, I'm having to pump in near 12 watts of energy, and I'm turning around burning 9.5 watts off as heat. This is not good. All right, let's look at the first example of how this saves power and really increases the reliability of your projects or products if you're using it. In this case, of course, I got 24 volts coming in. I adjusted it. This is a 10 ohm. Okay, this test jig here is simply an amp meter here. I clipped a voltmeter across it, across this terminal block, I connected a 10 ohm load. I adjusted my switching power supply <clears throat> for a half an amp. Half an amp through a 10 ohm load is going to give you 5 volts. <coughs> okay. Total power consumption. I used 2.5 watts in the load. Um, when I ran this originally at a half an amp, it didn't even have a heat sink. The thing didn't get warm. I could, I gave it a half watt just guessing at it because nothing really got even warm on it that I could barely feel. And so, using this, I was using a whopping three watts as were before using this nightmare here like they did in much of the satellite and consumer equipment in the 80s, I use 3 watts versus 12 watts. This is energy savings, but it also increases circuit reliability. 
Okay, here is a block diagram to the LM2575. They come in both adjustable and fixed versions. You could actually take the fixed versions that come in 3.3, 5, 12, and 15 volts, add a, resist, a resistor or a pot in here, and you should be able to adjust the output. Nonetheless, I took 24 volts at 125 milliamps on this test and of course I produced two 5 volts at a half an amp on a 10 ohm load using 2.5 watts. When I ran this up I used a 5 ohm load which I will cover next and ran, and ran the current up to, to uh, 5 volts at um, 5 ohms to 10 ohms in parallel ran it up to a max of one amp then it started getting warm all right let's talk about this circuit example i have adjusted my switching power supply to output 2.5 volts at a half an amp into a 5 ohm load um, when i first ran this prototype up i added the heat sink later when I ran it up for testing it to one amp, at a half an amp, it doesn't even get warm. I can't, I couldn't feel it. I could detect no heating in the uh, switching regulator itself or any of the components. Nonetheless, let's look at the uh, efficiency here. 2.5 volts, half an amp, that's 1.25 watts. I estimated eh, half a watt for the power supply and so I had 1.75 watts used by the power supply and the load. Um, what if I had used, in, the, in this case I'm dropping 21.5 volts. If I had used that linear voltage regulator, I would have been generating 10.75 watts worth of heat. Now look at it this way, 1.75 watts versus 12 watts, I'll take 1.75 watts. This is where the case where less is best. All right, let's close this out with some construction recommendations that I found out when I built the prototype. I'm going to build a final model and take more of this into consideration. When you're building these things, these are high frequency. That is a problem with switching regulators. They can produce noise, so you, as you see with these heavy lines. By the way, I used a larger output capacitor and a larger input capacitor than what they showed. I used a different, slightly higher powered um, Schottky diode than what they recommended. It works fine. And I used a pot and a resistor as, a, as opposed to just a voltage divider. When you build these, keep in mind if you're going to run this thing up to one amp, it'll get a little warm. And so you want to use good low ESR capacitors. And you might want to get them a little more with a higher temperature rating. I don't see it as a problem unless you're running it up at one amp, pretty close to one amp in a confined space with um, not much airflow. <clears throat> one last note, I mentioned the on-off pin has to be grounded. There's several things you can do, but showed here, um, this is an under voltage lockout. What you can do, this would come in handy, say you had a set of solar panels, and you were try and this along with a current limiter would be great for regulating the voltage to charge some batteries but if your solar panel output drops below a certain point you can change that with the zener diode here if it drops below a certain voltage the zener diode will no longer conduct q1 will turn off the collector will go high and it will turn off the regulator. You can also use something like this to connect to an Arduino or Raspberry Pi or something similar. You can use a computer or microcontroller 
to switch the regulator on and off, supply power when you need it, and so forth. And that completes this uh, video on the LM2575. Thanks for listening.